welcome to this video. I hope to be able to give you peace of mind as to how long you should wait when you get a new orchid before you repot it, clean up the root ball and put it into your preferred setup and media, or at least give you the confirmation of what you knew already. But the fact that you're here, maybe you just needed that extra little push to understand what you were thinking of doing is a-okay either way. And this could be the confirmation for your next step. The purpose of this video is to give you peace of mind when you get new orchids and the media looks absolutely horrible. And then you're thinking, I am going to go straight in. I've got to clean this orchid up. Not only do we have itchy fingers because yay, new orchid. And then we want to get it all cleaned up, but also because the media looks horrible. You don't know how to go about dealing with the media the orchid is in or even the media is not ideal for your climate. Whatever the reasons are, going into an orchid that is brand new into your collection can be a good idea if you have the perfect conditions, no matter what time of year it is, what season you are in, meaning you have a controlled space, you have adequate light for an extended period of time of at least 12 hours a day, you have heat to match or cold to match depending on the orchid in question. And if you've got active growth happening with your new orchid, which is fundamental across the board, whether you've got perfect conditions or not, active growth, active root growth, or if you don't have active root growth, you know that the new growth on your orchid will be producing new roots very, very soon. And for that reason, you can go in and repot because the new roots will grow into the media and setup of your choice. So I've just described something that not everybody has when they are growing their orchids. Not everybody is in a controlled environment. Some of us depend on mother nature to provide us with plenty of light, even during the winter season in the northern or southern hemisphere. Seeing as not all of us have a controlled environment where we can close the doors, crank up the heat and keep the lights on. So if you're an orchid grower that has all those requirements in place and you came here for the answer as to how long is too long for me before I can repot my orchid, how long do I have to wait? Don't wait. The only thing that you have to wait for is new roots and you are A-OK -okay to repot if your orchid is growing new roots actively no matter what time of year it is. And know that I'm very jealous if you grow in those conditions because I wish I could have those conditions. Just a quick disclaimer, many years ago I had said conditions and I would receive orchids in September and October and depending on what the orchid was doing, I dove right into the pot, cleaned the root ball up, did my thing into my setup and off she grew more often than not. On occasions, I may have stalled her or set the orchid back, but more often than not in that beautiful controlled environment with plenty of light going, she grew. But let's talk about those of us now that do not have those ideal conditions. And we've had this orchid now in our collection a couple of days and we really want to clean her up because we're concerned about losing the roots that are in the pot. How long is too long? Is there even such a thing as too long when it comes to epiphytes and media? And the answer to that is any new orchid that you get despite the media it is in you can keep that orchid in that media indefinitely if you take on board a few of the pointers that I'm going to bring to your attention. These pointers being your pH. No matter the media, if the pH is off in the pot, the roots are gonna die. And you see, the roots are gonna die even if the orchid is repotted and put into fresh media and the pH is off. So it's not about the media that the roots are in at the moment that the orchid is in. It is about your pH and how are you watering the orchid while it is in that media? Because if the media is old and degrading, it will turn acidic, meaning that the orchid is not gonna be able to take up any nutrients that you are providing it to get it back to strength so that you can repot it because the pH is way down. We cannot be going in with a pH of 6.7, 6.5, thinking we're giving it calcium magnesium if 
the media is breaking down and usually it is in cases like these and expect the orchid to absorb what we are providing this day and age new orchids from garden centers even nurseries come in a form of cocoa choir but you know complex hybrids normally have the cocoa choir even if you do get an orchid in bark that can extend the lifespan of the pot but let's just say that we are going to be focusing on our ph levels that we are putting into the pot so that the orchid can stay in the pot until she performs in such a way that we are ready to repot and our climate if we don't have ideal conditions is such that we can back up that repot and she is in active growth and continues to stay that way temperature is fundamental but even if you have great temperatures without the right ph those roots are gonna die know that anything happening in the pot if you're unsure about it when your orchid arrives first of all give her a good soak with the water you normally use to water your orchids with measure the ph of the water that you normally water your orchids with when you just do a flush no nutrients in the water measure that pH and then soak your orchid in that same water for about an hour. And that is the example I'm going to be doing today just to see what's going on in my pot with my Guaratea black comet that I got from Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents. She has been soaking in plain water at a pH of 7 which I measured prior to soaking the orchid. It's been an hour we're going to take her out and we're going to see what that water has to offer us. You see, if the pH is off, no nutrients will be absorbed. And if we get too acidic in a pot, then the roots are gonna die as a consequence of it being too acidic and not as a consequence of the orchid not getting enough nutrients or what we also like to hear a lot, being overwatered. You see, an orchid that comes into our collection in the media that we have when it arrives, that orchid is used to that media. The roots of the orchid are used to this media. Even though we know this is not the right media for the orchid, but the roots are in there. Clearly, something went okay while she was growing this growth. It bloomed and then was bought and brought home. So those roots know that media. The velamen is adapted to this media. So the media might be going downhill in our opinion but the roots are coping if we then put in the wrong ph and the media is already a little bit acidic we are gonna drop that ph in the pot even further and i'm hoping i'm trying to talk while i'm looking at the screen hoping that you can see the display of the ph meter we are at 6.2 right now for this orchid from a one hour soak we're at 6.1. It's fluctuating between 6.1 and 6.2. In order to make sure that the orchid is able to take up the nutrients that we are providing while we are waiting for it to grow new growth so that we can repot, we have to know what is the pH in the pot and then we can respond accordingly. If I were to now put in a solution of nutrients and say, okay, I'm going to put it in at six. It's not going to do anything. It's going to drop even further. We're not doing the orchid any justice by getting the pH wrong. Having an understanding of the pH in the pot after a soak, let's take the lowest pH that we see, in my case 6.1. That is our guideline and then we are going to be putting in any solution, be it fertilizer or be it any supplements, we are going to crank the pH up to about 7, even 7.2 to counteract and balance out the low pH in the pot. This way you can expand the lifespan of your orchid, give her the nutrients that she needs while you wait for new roots to grow before you get to cleaning her up and putting her into your media and your setup. So indefinitely is the answer as to how long should you wait before you repot an orchid if you respect the pH of the pot. And now I can hear everybody saying, oh, but my roots are not going to get any oxygen. The media is breaking down. It's compacting and it's not going to allow for any oxygen exchange or aeration around the roots, suffocating the roots. Once again, let me remind you that the roots are used to this media. They are used to the fact that they are a little bit more enclosed. 
the velamen is very, very receptive to the fact that it grew in this media and it can handle it. If I so chose to not report my Guarechea black comet and leave her in the pot, and let new roots grow in there, they will adapt. Oftentimes, these complex hybrids come in this media just as a reminder. They are used to it. Besides, by the time they come into our home, they're gonna get a lot more flushing and more oxygen around their roots than they've ever had since they've been at the garden center prying to reaching our home. Water has oxygen in it. It's not about airflow. Any roots will suffocate and die off if the pot is stagnant. Once the orchid is in our collection, there is no such thing as a stagnant pot because now we're fertilizing and we're flushing. There's plenty of oxygen in that pot with the water that we're providing for there never to be a stagnant pot. That is the plan anyway, and that's why we buy the orchid. But you see where I'm getting at, at least I hope so. If you're having difficulty timing wise, let's just say life gets in the way and you cannot repot. There's no panic in needing to get into an orchid straight away. You can wait indefinitely as long as you get your pH right, which will ensure that your orchid will get all the nutrients, meaning up the pH to counteract any acidity in the pot, flush the orchid to counteract any possible stagnation and bring oxygen into that media regardless of the state that it is in. This is super important information for those of us who do not have a control environment where we can attack an orchid regardless of the four seasons that we have. If the orchid is in its growing season, we should go in. But if we don't have the ideal conditions, the best thing to do is leave the orchid alone and feel happy about the fact that all it takes to maintain her health and the roots that are in the pot is to tweak the pH. That'll give you peace of mind for months and you don't have to worry about anything. And you will see eventually <laughs> new growths coming. Even my zygopetalum here that had absolutely nothing really to work with, shriveled bulbs months ago when I received her, the new growth with the blooms that triggered the fact I had to bring her home, that just, you know, look at it. It rotted out. She is still in the nursery pot, still with the weeds from the nursery pot, still with the tag because I was trying to prove a point. And here we have two new growths. And all I've been doing is ensuring that my pH is high enough so that the nutrients will be absorbed, counteracting the acidity in the media and flushing the pot through to make sure it never goes stagnant. I mean, another easy thing to do without going into the pH, you can rummage around and see is your orchid growing new growth if you can't see it based on the media. But I'm telling you, if you don't want to be rummaging around and you just want to do the experiment for yourself, get yourself one of these orchids that is in this coca choir peaty thing, I don't know what, and work with the pH and leave her be and see what happens. I've been working with the zygopetalum now, oh, a long time, much longer than the Guarachea. But both of them are not showing signs of deficiency and both of them are growing new growth despite the state that they were in before. The root system of the Zygopetalum is going to be appalling by the time I take her out of the pot, but that is only appalling based on the treatment she had prior to arriving in my collection. Working with what I had available in the pot has produced this result. And the same with the Guarachea. When she arrived, she had an itty bitty tiny little growth. Granted, she's a vigorous orchid, a great genus, by the way, a forgiving genus, but only forgiving in so far that we get it right with the pH because no orchid is gonna tolerate this long term unless we tweak the pH. And then we can make the whole thing work in our favor time-wise, temperature-wise, season-wise, and eventually pot-wise. So if you're ever in a situation where you cannot get to an orchid quick enough and you're thinking, oh my goodness, it's gonna die, it's gonna die, the roots are gonna die, trust me, they won't. And I can assure you that even an orchid that is growing vigorously, if you get your pH wrong, those roots are gonna die. So it's not about what media is the orchid in, it's how we address the pH to ensure that we are working with the right pH level to give the orchid what it needs, no matter the media.
If you don't believe me, I recommend that you try it for yourself. Get yourself something from a big box store that is in this funky media right here and then go with it for six to eight months. Make sure that you go with an orchid like my Zygopedalum. It's struggling, the pseudobulbs were nasty, a growth was rotting out, etc, etc. And then see what happens in six to eight months as long as you stick with the pH and as long as you avoid a stagnant pot and let me know in six to eight months what the results have been and have you repotted it since or are you still going to drag out the experiment a little bit longer. I hope that this video however saves you the time. I still have no intentions of repotting these two orchids because I don't have active root growth on my new growths just yet. When I have them, I'm going in and then I'll feel much better about possibly losing a zygopetalum root system because the next root system is on its way. And I am still waiting for new roots right here as well because why shock an orchid after waiting all this time, faffing around with a pH, getting it right, getting them through whatever stress they were in prior to coming into the collection and then repotting too soon, shock it, set it back. There's no point in doing that. So my pH is still up there, 7, 7.2 and my orchids are doing great. And I hope that this video, these tips, these pointers will help you out and save you a lot more time than however long this video ends up to be in total. <laughs> Speaking of time, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. If you have watched to the end, thank you so very, very much. It helps my channel. It helps the video as well as a thumbs up would also help the video. Thank you for that as well. Or a thumbs down if you disagree. And if you do disagree, please, please, I'm open to anything in the comments. Let's continue the dialogue. People look for information in the comments section. So if you disagree, let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it. In the meantime, I wish you a beautiful day. On one condition though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.